Hey, 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 friends. Today is the day. Today is the day that we are making lasagna. I made quite a big, a large lasagna, so you could see there that I have a whole pound of mozzarella. I have a 48-ounce container of cottage cheese, and I have two pounds of hamburger. This is Italian-style cheese. Couldn't find this in the block. Couldn't find Parmesan in the block. And that big old pack of mozzarella string cheese. However, I don't use the whole thing. I just bought it because my kids eat like eat that like candy um, every day in their lunchbox. And then I use oven-ready lasagna noodles as well as um, I, do, I do use my own homemade sauce. But for the sake of this video, I just picked up two um, jarred pasta sauces so that I could um, share this with you. Um, because most people don't make their own pasta sauce, I figured I'd just pull it uh, from the shelf instead of from my pantry so that you guys could locate the same things that I have here in this video so it'd be easier for you to follow the recipe. Um, with that being said, friends, I do not uh, follow any specific recipe. I don't usually follow recipes at all. I am more of a um, fly-by-the-seat-of-my-pants kind of cook. Um, there's certain things that I follow the recipe on, but not a lot. So as you can see here, I am throwing all of this cheese in this bowl, and I am putting my eggs in there. You want the eggs in the cheese mixture um, so that you can bind all that yummy, rich cheese together. Um, and by the way, I do use the large curd cottage cheese. Um, we are cottage cheese kind of people here, but by all means, if you're a ricotta fan, go ahead and get ricotta um, because I know that's up for debate. Some people like uh, lasagna with ricotta. Some people like it with cottage cheese. I don't personally like the texture of cottage cheese or of ricotta because it's got like a grainy thing to it, kind of like pears on the inside. Um, and I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan at all. So now I'm going to be shredding this entire one pound block of mozzarella. That is gonna go on the inside in the cheese mixture. Uh, the string cheese uh, mozzarella actually goes on top of my lasagna. Um, at the end of putting it together, it's like the topping for it. So good, friends. So just moving along, moving along. I am shredding this cheese up. Also, by the way, you want to be preheating your oven to uh, 350 degrees. And in the background, which I probably am not showing you, but I am um, frying up that hamburger in the background. And again, I do a fairly large lasagna. Um, so I have two pounds of... Um, hamburger but by all means if you're making like half the size of a lasagna that I am you can cut this recipe in half or you can just really go to uh, the grocery store and pick up these ingredients and wing it like I do. Um, this is not like a family recipe this is just something that I put together uh, willy-nilly like and there's been several people that's asked me to do a video on how to make said lasagna so I am doing that. We're just gonna mix this all together, get it all nice and mixturized. There are things that as a child I learned um, how to cook via a recipe from my grandma. Um, and then there's just stuff that I just do. I don't, I'm not a measurer really. Um, when I'm making bread um, from scratch, I tend to measure that exactly because you have to have the right ingredients and whatnot. As you can see here, I'm. Um, this clip is probably out of order. I would imagine that I started this hamburger situation um, like before I started the cheese mixture, but obviously because I haven't shredded that. Um, and this little dish right here is my Rachel Ray. This is a large deep dish casserole pan. Um, I do not know the name of said pan, um, I don't even know if she makes the same pan anymore, um, but it is a Rachel Ray um, casserole dish, deep dish. Um, and as you can see, I start with the a little bit of sauce on the bottom. 
I do not cook my noodles in advance. If you wanted to go through and cook noodles, um, if you didn't want to get the no-bake kind like me or the no-cook kind like me, the oven-ready noodles, then you could by all means do that. Uh, I don't have the patience to um, mess with noodles after they've been cooked and you know, making sure they lay flat and you don't tear them up. It's just too much work for me. Um, so there's that. So then I put a layer of noodles down, as you can see, and now I'm going through and placing a cheese mixture on top of that. And then I'm just gonna spread her out, get her nice and thin. This is the way that I get so many layers in my lasagna. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's five layers to this or maybe six, depending. I'm not 100% sure now. Think, I, don't really, I don't really measure it out. You know what I'm saying? I get the ingredients. I mix it all up. I put it in there. And as many layers as I get is what I get. But if you're like, you know, cooking for your husband and it's just you and him and all you need is a nine by nine pan of lasagna you know what i mean then by all means just cut this recipe in like half or a third even or you can make two nine by nines or three nine by nines with the amount of ingredients that i got right here um if the ingredients for lasagna wasn't so dang expensive all the time um, I would probably make two or three of them up at once just to have one in the freezer or two in the freezer or whatever. And I may end up doing that at some point in time. If you guys watch my channel, uh, you guys pretty much know that I have been working on stocking my pantry back up because um, we depleted it before we went on vacation this past summer. Um, and we're, we, I ordered a half of a cow. So I'm kind of just buying uh, meats as I need them right now because I know I'm getting ready to pay $700 for a cow. And then I also ordered a um, hog as well. So, you know, I don't want to overspend the money that I could be setting back for that those two things because that's quite a purchase. But that will be uh, probably enough meat Um Minus the chicken. If I could find a local, both the hog and the cow were coming from um, a local farmer. But if I could find a local farmer who has chickens that they butcher, I will probably um, go ahead and pick up some uh, chickens as well. Um, we have chickens, but um, we do not have meat birds. We have laying hens um, and we do not have a rooster because they're mean and we I just don't want to deal with that nor do I want to have little baby chickens laying around I live out in the middle of nowhere so the foxes tend to want to come up and try and get my birds which usually they're unsuccessful but if I had little baby chicks I think that that would be a problem so here we are we're just going to continue to layer layer and layer some more until we get all of the ingredients. This is obviously the last layer of cheese that I'm putting in here. Um, so then there's just gonna be a layer of sauce, of that good sauce over there. I did mix the hamburger in with that uh, sauce over there. Like I said, I did use jarred sauce. My, my family wasn't too impressed with this lasagna because I did that, uh, because they're used to my homemade sauce because uh, we grow that stuff in the garden and I can all that stuff that stuff up every year. But I do like to have uh, jarred sauce on hand, just a few of them, just because I, you know, in case of a pinch or a bind, you know, because whenever you can sauce, I tend to just can um, plain Jane, like tomato sauce. I'll either do diced tomatoes, I'll jar or I'll can diced tomatoes. And then I will make a plain sauce because I don't, I want to be able to use that sauce in any way that I want to. So for example, I would probably put different seasonings in my pasta sauce, as in like my spaghetti sauce, than I would marinara. Um, most of the ingredients are the same, but I usually mix that up somehow. And then, you know, other times if I'm making Sloppy Joe's, for example, I want to use a different sauce as well, different ingredients in the sauce, but the base is the same, if that makes sense. So um, sometimes I don't have time to adjust 
the canned sauce that I homemade can. And, you know, sometimes I just need to bust open a jar of pasta sauce and just hang with that, you know. Um, it just depends on what's going on. We, we're quite busy, you know. All of our kids play sports, like all of them, and they play all of the sports. We do have one. My oldest son is grown now, but he still eats at home, girl, you know. So sometimes your girl's just busy. Uh, in the winter months, not so much. That's kind of when I do a lot of my um, stocking up on freezer meals and things like that because I have more time because there's no sports going on in the winter. Um, but then once spring hits, we start track season and baseball season and all that. So then, you know, the cycle continues. But when it's winter, I usually do the majority of my freezer stock up like meal wise um, in the winter time when I've got more time to cook. And so that's the way that is looking. Um, the lasagna is fairly simple. I mean, there's really nothing to it. Like I said, you can always replace the cottage cheese with ricotta and use whatever cheeses you like. I mean, if you would rather put, instead of the meat sauce, beef, you could put turkey in there. You could put sausage in there. You could do a combination of all of that if you want to. Um, this is just the way that my folks, my, 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 my families, um, like their, like their lasagna, they're used to eating it this way. Um, and we always do some like garlic bread with that. I do believe in total, I put 10 of these string cheese. I just tear them up. You know, it gives a nice little, um, bubbly crusty here at the end. It'll flash up a picture of what it looks like when it's done. Um, but you know, it makes a nice little fun topping. And then, uh, you know, it's a cheesy goodness, very rich, but I have to say that um, my it's one of my family's favorites as well. And um, I never have any problem with the leftovers getting eaten because they'll eat on it for days and days, lunch. We don't hardly, I tend to try to cook like as much as what we're going to eat because nobody really likes to eat leftovers. So I tend to, you know, just make sure I'm cooking you know, enough for everybody to have a plate. And then if people are still hungry after that, then they can have a sandwich or a snack or whatever they want out of the refrigerator. We do save the leftovers if we end up with leftovers, but I try to not have leftovers if that makes sense because they don't get eaten and I don't like wasting food. Um, but this here lasagna is something that there most definitely will be leftovers because this is a huge lasagna and um, it's something that they will also eat leftovers of because it's yummy. It's probably one of their favorites um, that I cook all together. So anyway, what you're going to do is um, you're going to put a piece of aluminum foil over the top of this bad boy after you get all the string cheese on there that you want. I mean, there was 24 string cheeses in that pack. If you want to put all 24 on there, girl, it's your lasagna. Go ahead and do that. If you don't want to put any string cheese on the top and you just want to put a layer of mozzarella, go ahead and do that. Um, I just do this because my kids like it, you know? But anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to, hopefully by this time your oven is preheated to a smooth 350 degrees, and you're going to put a piece of aluminum foil on that bad boy, and I tend to cook mine with the aluminum foil on it for about 45 minutes. Um, 45 minutes in, I usually pull it out, check the status of said lasagna. Now, all this stuff is cooked already, minus the you know, cheese needs to just get warm and bubbly and nice and hot on the inside. So I tend to cook it with the aluminum foil on it for about 45 minutes. I take the aluminum foil off for the last um, 15 minutes. And then sometimes I put it under the broiler and that's pretty much how it goes to bubble up that uh, cheese. And that's really all there is to it. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you'd like to see uh, more of these videos like this that show you how I make certain things. I'm happy to oblige in that. Um, until next time, guys, have a good day. Bye.